Question 2.2. A mutation has occurred on a section of an mRNA molecule as shown below. Remember that when we talk about a mutation, the definition for a mutation is the change in the nucleic acid. And it's usually a change relating to the order of nucleotides. So our nucleotides are our building blocks to make a nucleic acid. The change in the order of nucleotides is going to produce a different result. And that change, the actual change of nucleotides is called a mutation. So we're looking at mRNA and we see that the original sequence, and we read it carefully, A, U, G. Let's go to the mutated sequence, A, U, G. Okay, so mutation didn't occur there. G, A, A, and G, A, A. So far, so good. No mutation. A, U, A, A, U, A. There's no mutation so far until we come to this triplet, C, C, G, we go to the mutated sequence, C, U, G. And here, it's a C for cytosine and a U for uracil. We can quickly check that the other triplets are all correct, and we see that this now is the site or the place of our mutation. What do we call this kind of mutation? The mutation that occurs in one gene, we call a gene mutation. And the particular kind of gene mutation that we're seeing here is substitution of uracil for cytosine. So it's a gene mutation of the substitution kind. Give a reason for your answer. Gene mutations relate to one gene only, not to many genes. That's, if it's affecting many genes, it's going to be a chromosomal mutation. But remember on our stretch of DNA, we've got lots of genes. The whole stretch of DNA is the chromosome, but we're not looking at changes to the whole chromosome. We're looking at changes to one gene only. And it's a substitution type because instead of there being a cytosine, we have substituted in a uracil. So there we've accounted for why we've called it a gene mutation. And over here we have described why we call it a substitution kind of gene mutation. All right, the table below shows some mRNA codons and the amino acids that they code for. So, for example, in this column, we've got mRNA codon AUA, and the amino acid it codes for is isoleucine, all the way down the table. Let's now go to our first question. State the number of different amino acids coded for by the original sequence of the mRNA molecule above. If it was on your page, it would be nice and simple, but we're looking for AUG, GAA. Let's quickly go down here. We're looking AUG and GAA. Let's go back up to our table. We're looking for a, U, A, and C, C, G, A, U, A, and C, C, G, and right at the end, we're looking 
at GGA. Remember, it said on the original sequence, GGA. Now we can look in this table because what we're told is we have to state the number of different amino acids coded for by our original stretch of mRNA. So do we find an AUG? We do indeed. It codes for methionine. There's one. GAA, here it is here. It codes for glutamic acid, which is different to methionine. So there's our second one. AU, a, right? A U A codes for isoleucine, which is different to methionine and glutamic acid, so that's our third amino acid. We check out CCG. Here we go. CCG is going to code for proline. There's our fourth different kind of amino acid. Then we come to GGA, here it is, and that codes for glycine. Different to isoleucine, different to methionine, different to proline, glutamic acid. So glycine is amino acid number five. So state the number of different amino acids. It's going to code for five amino acids. There's another way to work that out. You know that a triplet code is going to code for one amino acid. The next triplet is going to code for another amino acid. So you could have answered this question very simply by counting up the number of triplet codes. And in that way, you're going to see how many amino acids you have. Give the anticodon on the tRNA molecule that carries the amino acid isoleucine. Here's isoleucine. Its mRNA codon is AUA. So if the mRNA codon is AUA, what is the anticodon on the tRNA, we're going to see that A, adenine, is going to pair with uracil, not thiamine because there's no thiamine in RNA. The uracil is going to pair with an adenine and that adenine is going to pair with another uracil. Use the information in the table to describe the effect of the mutation on the protein formed. So our mutation, let's go back to this, was instead of CCG, we have CUG. So instead of CCG, which should have produced proline, we now have C-U-G, which is going to insert leucine. So we've got a bit of a problem here. The effect of the, pro of the mutation on the protein, we're going to, and remember, we're talking four marks here, instead of the protein having um, proline, we're going to see it have, go back again, check. Instead of proline, we're going to see leucine. We've got leucine. Now, what are the implications of this? This could change the structure of the protein. It could change the functioning of the protein and it could be that this is a small change but it could be that the change is huge or large or significant 
and that means that the final protein that is produced does not function as it should. So we can give lots of information here to get four marks. It definitely changes the structure because now we have proline instead of leucine. It could, that change could change the functioning of that protein. If it's a small change in the functioning, well, maybe the effect is not going to be significant. If it's an extreme change in the function, it could mean that that protein with leucine in it is not going to work at all, and that could bring about the death of an organism, or it could bring about a genetic disorder. So it all depends on what the effect is of substituting leucine for proline. But you put all the options down, all the possibilities.